Hello and welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast. I'm your host, Bo Eckstein, and today we have a real life Canadian and he might be the first Canadian on the show. Um, when I was a child, I lived on the East Coast and we used to drive up to Canada and I, I have such fond memories of Canada on the East Coast side. We go past the Thousand uh, Islands, then we'd go to this place called Lake Gananaqua and I'd go fishing there every year since I was a child with my whole family and all of our, all of the old, the elders would get drunk and I'd, I would try to drink a little bit too. I was like 10 or 11 and uh, just have these amazing fish, fishing trips in Canada. And, and just, um, and then uh, I was in Whistler a couple of years back and Whistler is an amazing place. So Canada is just beautiful, absolutely beautiful place. So we have a Canadian here and uh, ex hockey player, pro referee, really kind of that was I, I i'm taking it that was his passion as a child to become a professional hockey player and then he found his way into real estate real estate sales he runs a big brokerage and then he found his way into multifamily and we're going to talk about his journey and and now he's throwing in a huge event with like kevin o'leary and a, it's it's the biggest multifamily event in canada in the history of canada probably it's going to be yeah, a big that's event. true yeah. So, and that's coming up in May, right? Yeah. It All is right. 14th and 15th. Yeah. Uh, so please welcome Seth Ferguson. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, so you, you, you were in the mix of these hot professional hockey um, games and uh, that must be a pretty cool job. And you get to see on the ice, you get to see the fights breaking out and all the good stuff. So welcome to the show. Let's kind of start off with like, you know, after, after hockey, uh, how did you, how did you stumble into real estate? Yeah, well, uh, I was actually living in uh, Minneapolis at the time. And uh, I realized that a lot of the guys still chasing the dream uh, were broke. So I realized I needed a, a new, like a real job so to speak. So in my head, I figured, you know what? These real estate agents, they set their own schedule. They have all, all sorts of free time. So I went and got my real estate license thinking that I could still work and do the hockey game and chase my NHL dream and do all that stuff and sell houses at the same time. Well, little did I know it takes a whole lot of work to get started on the brokerage side. Um, and uh, so that's how I got my start. And then I ended up uh, doing really well on the brokerage side. Uh, you know, um, I was making what most people would call really good money. I had a nice fancy car, had a nice house. Um, but then I realized that uh, all my all the money coming in was going out just as fast and I had nothing left over. So that, that's that's how I got started in investing. And everybody that's listening before we went live, I was talking about because obviously Seth lives in Canada. Uh, about where he likes to invest. And he says, he says the rent restrictions, the rent rules in, in Canada are like 10 times worse what they are in California. So I just want you guys to realize like there's a lot of other places. Uh, if you look at other countries, you know, even with California being as bad as it is with their uh, regulations and so forth for uh, landlords, it's still way better than Canada. Uh, so most Canadians aren't investing locally in multifamily. They're looking out of the country and looking in the U.S. So just keep that in mind, people, that, you know, there it isn't as bad as many places. So there's a lot of opportunities in the States. And obviously, uh, we're going to kind of dive into how, how Seth got into the multifamily syndication and multifamily investing world. Um, and, and so you started crushing it as a, as a real estate broker. Um, you realize that selling houses, uh, is a lot of work. A lot of, you know, you, you'd see these agents and they, and you're like, well, it seems easy, but we're actually, when you get into brokerage sales, cause I am a California broker as well. And I've sold a lot of houses and, um, actually I, I, I hate selling houses now. Um, my core business is finance because it, it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. Uh, it can be extremely lucrative, but, um, I think when, when people look on the, on the, out. Uh, like they look and say, Oh, it's such an easy career. I'll get my real estate license. I'll do it part-time. It's, it, it's going to, it's going to absorb so much of your time. You got to build systems and teams and things like that to become really successful in real estate sales. So as you're doing this and you're making money, then how did you get into multifamily? Well, so I, I took a left turn on Albuquerque. So 
what happened was uh, I was selling the residential product. So I figured, hey, listen, like I know this stuff better than anybody else. Like I might as well just start acquiring these single family homes. So we did, you know, uh, you know, like your regular detached house. We did a duplex conversion, condo, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but then when it came time to scale, uh, so you talk about the differences between, uh, you know, with rent control, uh, US and uh, Canada, uh, financing is even like the box the lender wants you to fall inside is even tighter in Canada than it is in the US. So with single family homes, with residential properties, you know, the lender looks at you first to uh, carry uh, the debt and you have to uh, support the debt uh, rather than the property. So uh, with me, I was purchasing in and around Toronto, which is uh, one of the major uh, cities and, and metros here. And uh, so I was equity rich, cash flow poor. So I had a lot of equity, uh, but the, the cash flow was almost non-existent. Uh, and uh, so on paper, when you're trying to get the next mortgage, you have to, you know, you're banging your head against the wall. You're giving your arm, leg, firstborn child, just get financing. And uh, I realized it wasn't scalable. And then everything came to a head when my son was born. Uh, I still remember, you know, holding him in my arms, you know, and, uh, you know, in a blink of an eye, my life changed. And, and then I wanted to do, uh, do more, be better, um, not for myself anymore, but for my son. And uh, yeah, I, I just knew that real estate was the right, the right vehicle, but I was investing in the wrong real estate asset. So I, I started looking for my uh, looking through options. I looked at industrial, office, uh, multifamily, like self storage, and uh, I, I settled on multifamily because of its stability and uh, downturns. You look at the past, like three recessions, multifamilies outperformed all the other asset classes. And uh, it was something that I could relate to. And I think most people can relate to uh, apartment buildings. So uh, that's how I got my start uh, on the multifamily side. Very cool. And, and, I'm, and I'm assuming that there's a lot of, I know they're in the Toronto uh, area, it's extremely wealthy. So um, it's kind of a good place if you're raising capital probably, and, and especially to be the a Canadian that's helping find these opportunities in, within the States that you can get a lot of Canadian dollars. Is that kind of accurate? Like there's a lot of Canadian money that wants to own uh, American real estate. Yeah. Th there's a huge appetite right now. Huge. And uh, you know, not to say there's not appetite for the Canadian multifamily product, but if you're, you know, just to go back to the rent control side, like uh, last this year, we were able to raise rents 1.2% over last year in, in the province of Ontario. How, how, can you, how can you keep up with anything at a 1.2% increase? Uh, so, you know, if you're a value-add investor uh, going in, you can uh, certainly apply to exceed that amount, but uh, you're not even coming close to, to a market such as Texas where, you know, if uh, you, know, you have more control over what you can do, somebody doesn't pay, you have a lot more control over uh, getting them out, uh, that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, there certainly is a huge appetite right now for US multifamily product, for sure. And so uh, Texas is, is, an, is a market you like. What other markets have you um, are either looking at or, or do you own assets in? Yeah, so uh, you know uh, Orlando, Florida. Uh, so we're, we're looking uh, in Florida. We're hunting aggressively in Texas. You know, DFW, um, Austin, San Antonio. Um, we're even uh, looking at uh, Oklahoma, which is a little bit of a of a different one than uh, than those ones I just mentioned. Uh, but uh, I, I'm a big uh, I'm a big proponent of the uh, southern states. Uh, you just look at the demographic shift happening right now. You know, everybody's fleeing the coast. Uh, similar to in Canada, uh, lots of people are fleeing, uh, you know, the Toronto and Vancouver uh, proper and going uh, and spreading out more. So I, I think, uh, you know, down there for the next 20, 30 years, the market drivers are very strong. You know, that's where the job growth is happening. You know, you're not, uh, you're not hampering uh, business growth through excessive taxation, uh, you know, th those types of policies. So I, I think, you know, over the next 20, 30 years, like I said, there's a lot of runway for those markets. Is there any um, hurdles um, to get uh, Canadian dollars into the U.S. or it's pretty straightforward? It's, it's 
Are you, are you working with, a, are you working with a, a, a co-GP in the States? Um, is that kind of how you, you're set up? Yeah. So, uh, you know, with, uh, with COVID and everything, it, uh, oh, I'm not allowed to say that on YouTube. Um, I, I'll, I'll get your video demonetized. We might have to leave that out. But um, yeah, with, with what's happened over the past couple of years, um, it, you know, crossing the border and everything was a pain in the butt and that didn't happen. So we've got boots on the ground uh, in the U.S., uh, the main thing for Canadians to real uh, to recognize is uh, structuring. Um, a lot of people go online and they'll research U.S. real estate ownership, and you'll find LLCs uh, are very very popular. Um, that's great if you're an American, uh, but if you're a Canadian, um, our IRS, which is called the CRA, uh, Canada Revenue Agency, doesn't recognize the LLC. So you end up paying double tax. You get banged on the U.S. side and you get banged up here in Canada. Uh, so how you structure your investments, whether you're active or passive, uh, that is number one, because who wants to pay more tax than they have to, right? Mm -hmm. You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Hello, Bo Eckstein here, host of the Investor Financing Podcast. Are you a lender, real estate professional, or vendor that provides products or services within the real estate investing and business owner space? We are offering a few sponsorship opportunities to get in front of a highly targeted audience. If you're interested, please click the link below for further information. We look forward to talking with you. Thanks, make it a great day. So good, I learned something new. That's, that's interesting. So there's ways of creating entity structures that actually you're not going to get double tax on if you know how to do it. For, for sure. Yeah. Th there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, that's going to be like an hour long. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want to learn how to do it, yeah. go to, go, go to uh, Seth's seminar uh, or conference rather coming up in May. Um, but yeah, so, so there, like anything, there's, there's ways of doing it. I mean, uh, you can, you can, there's so many ways, right? Like, and here, I don't know, if, if, if you're doing cost segregation, it might not be effective for you there, but, but the, the cash flow appreciation and all that other stuff is, is, is advantageous. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you mentioned cost segregation, you know, we, we definitely are big fans of cost segregation and uh, the flow through does happen. Uh, but it's just like, if you're a Canadian listening right now, or if you're an American who's looking at or thinking of raising Canadian dollars, you must like, I can't overemphasize this. You must get your structuring right because every week I get messages from people from my, my YouTube channel or Instagram and they've already done something and it's too late and they are toast uh, when it comes to taxes. Uh, so, so do all your homework up front. Uh, you know, it's not an LLC uh, for Canadians. You know, you want to be looking at limited partnership structuring instead, L, uh, going through LPs rather than LLCs. Uh, but it is doable. Just just talk with the right people. So so um, today you're you have as an LPGP you have about 150 million dollars of deals you're invested in. Yeah yeah right right now yeah we're 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 almost there. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah like uh, you know I right now I'm treating this conference as my next deal because <laughs> it is it is crazy. So once the conference happens we're we're back on the uh, back on the hunt uh, to find the next one. So you were doing like events and meetups and, and you have a, a regular meetup probably, and you, you know, you're the kind of go-to guy in, in your area. And then what, why do you decide to throw like kind of step it up and now you're throwing like a huge event? I mean, you have like Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary coming. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And, and, and what, what's this, who, who else is coming to the event and what can people expect if they do come to the event? Yeah, for, for sure. Well, I, I'm I'm so excited um, about who we have coming. So like Kevin, obviously, and I couldn't think, you know, uh, when we're raising capital, like who has seen more pitches than Kevin O'Leary, right? Like he, he's pitched so often. So, and the thing is, if you're out there raising capital for a real estate deal, your competition's trying to take your investors' money too. Like they're, they're, they're pitching as well. So you, you have to really uh, have your pitch super, super tight. Uh, Joe Fairless, who controls over a billion dollars in multifamily, is coming. Joel Block. Uh, so we were talking about structuring. Uh, you know, uh, if you're looking to scale, whether it's launching your first fund or uh, launching your first syndication, uh, you know, Joel's a great guy. Pierre Paul Turgeon's under like he, he's an underwriting genius. 
you know, the, the list goes on and on and on uh, of these uh, top class uh, people. So, um, but why did I do the conference? Well, uh, nobody's done it. And it was about time somebody did it. So w- one of the things I found is, uh, you know, in the U.S., you know, people are proud of their accomplishments and they're, and they're proud of to like talk about it and celebrate it. In Canada, we're a little bit more, you know, quiet about it. So, you know, nobody likes to get up there and just say, you know what, like, this is what we're doing. Uh, you know, come check it out. Uh, we're a lot more reserved. So it was about time somebody launched a conference, uh, you know, about multifamily. Uh, the, the need was there. The interest is there. And uh, so I, I'm thrilled to have investors. Like we've got people coming from the U.S., all over the U.S., actually, and all over Canada to meet up in uh, beautiful Toronto. Well, yeah, no, I guess it's actually if, if, if you're a multifamily investor and you're an American and, you know, it's good to network with the Canadian because you just meet one good contact. It could be your next partner, it could be an LP in a deal. And that's what these conferences are really about. I mean, obviously there's a lot of educational component, but but like I like to go to events for the networking. It's like, who's going to be there? Who can I meet? And what 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 outcomes? And every conference I go to, you know, you, you, even if the content wasn't good per se, you, you're always you're always just like meet that one relationship and that, you know, can lead into so much, which is great. That's why I love it. And in the last two years, I haven't really done it, even though I live in Las Vegas, the conference capital of the world, because of COVID, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't want to wear a mask and like sitting in, but now that things are opening back up, it's like perfect, right? Like, it's like, this is the time everybody's eager to get out and do things and and get busy. So that's pretty cool. So where, uh, where can people find um, the website to see, you know, to register and, and get the info on the event? Yeah, I, I, we'll put a link uh, right below this video. Okay. Uh, the website is multifamilyconference.ca. Okay, and I will link link below. And then, and then, Seth, will you will you talk to to us about? Um, you, you have a podcast, um, and then you had a book, "Sell for More," published in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, that, that's right. Well, actually, I first should mention that we have a special discount code for all your listeners. Um, for the conference. So all they have to do is enter in Bo10 and uh, they can get uh, 10% off. So perfect. Just, Thank totally you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I look at my YouTube, like I do have listeners in Canada too. So it's like US and Canada, the only people that actually listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. For, for sure. And, and like just to go back to what you were saying with the networking, you know, every event I go to, like there's one deal there waiting for you. Like you just have to find it. Uh, so, you know, but my, my goal, whenever I go to whatever event, just like you were saying, like it, it's finding that one deal, but, you know, maybe it'll come two years later if you, when you keep in touch, but there is at least one deal in every event you go to. How did, how did you meet um, the, your partners in the States that you got involved in on, on some of these deals? Yeah. So uh, we have the internet to thank actually for, for that. Um, so yeah, it, it all goes back to, to making the connections. Like, um, you know, you, you kind of, you get in touch, you know, you'll see the content somebody's doing, you'll get in touch or you'll be introduced by somebody. And then, you know, you go back and forth and then you actually meet them in person at a live event. And that's where that relationship gets solidified. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, before I'll go somewhere, you know, I'll kind of see who's going, make some new connections. And then plan to actually meet them and, and have a real sit down face to face conversation uh, once we're there. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. It's like not rocket science on how to get deals done, how to do deals, how to raise money. It's really, uh, I'm actually listening to an older book. I don't know when it was first originally um, published, but I'm listening to it on Audible. Uh, it's called Never Eat Alone by Kevin uh, Ferzaza or something like that, Ferrazzi. But that's a great book. But the whole premise is like, like that's exactly what he would do. If he was going to a conference, he would look to who's going to be there. He'd research them beforehand. He'd make like a hit list of people he wanted to meet yeah. and then go meet those people because most, most people, they just go to the conference and like, okay, whatever happens, happens. But actually if you're, if you kind of like, okay, who do I want to meet there? Okay. And like, who's going there? Cause usually that you can, and that's, that was like super smart and it's like simple, but most of us don't do that. And it's like, wow, you can, and then he just talks about, it's a really, really good book. Like just talking about stuff that we should be doing and we don't do. And just, you know, the importance of relationships because everything comes from a relationship, everything, you know, raising capital, especially it's all relationship based. 
Yeah, for, for sure. And you know what? It, it's driven me nuts the past two years because like everything's gone on Zoom. And like, let's be honest, you know, sit, Zoom does not replace a real conversation face. Like you and I, like we're talking right now over the computer, but if we were in person, it would be 10 times better. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah that, that is true. But we are what we are. Zoom, I think, is like, <laughs> I shouldn't say what I was going to say. But, but anyway, Zoom is... It, it, is 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 good and you should be using zoom but you're definitely right like you know belly to belly networking is is like the ultimate thing to do and, and i've i've gained so many relationships through networking i'm in a bunch of masterminds and and like it's just amazing like to, to actually to, to go to events and like i miss that so um yeah my wife lets me go i'll come to canada and then uh maybe i can go visit and go fishing and do all the fun stuff but oh, yeah yeah come up in may um yeah. but it's uh we actually have some really cool people coming so it'll be a whole lot of fun cool uh and kind of rounding out our conversation here um what's 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 next for you are you gro- are you also growing your real estate team do you have a big real estate team and uh is that a, is that is that pretty much an autopilot? Do you have buyer's agents with you working for you? And because some of the people that listen are just fix and flip investors and, and a lot of real estate investor, uh, agent investor type of people. So they're, they're curious there too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we run a, a, a lean and mean operation. Uh, we, we've got three people plus myself on the team. Um, I'm not really too involved in the, uh, in the selling uh, anymore. Um, I, I'm more of on the coaching side and, uh, just kind of macro, uh, you know, I, I'll, we'll do market updates and I'll give my thoughts on, you know, the, what, what's happening in the market, where I see it going, that sort of stuff. But in terms of the day to day, I'm not really there anymore, which is nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so we, we cover, uh, just outside of Toronto. Um, so we have, a you know, the average, uh, a townhouse now is over a million dollars on average. So it is insane. Uh, and it, I always laugh, like with my podcast and stuff, like just talking about property values, it's like, yeah, if you want a box, you're at least a million bucks in Toronto, which is crazy. Yeah. So Toronto is like as expensive, if not more expensive than San Francisco. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, like uh, they're always like, you have New York, Toronto, uh, Vancouver, um, like all those top major metros, like they're always in the same conversation. And they'll kind of like uh, go neck and neck with one and two and one and three. They're, they're always kind of moving. It, it's insane. Yeah, that is crazy. Well, it's, it seems to be a pl- good place to be. A lot of uh, rich people that uh, need to diversify their, their, their investments. So it's a good place to be. And what better place than, than Texas real estate, right? <laughs> like, yeah, no, so- that, that's right. Like hu- huge appetite and, Number one, I think, is just education and, and just and just showing people what other options they have. Like, I'm sure you found the same thing. You know, most people, they grow up, even if you're running a successful business, you don't know your real estate investing options and how, you know, how much better it can be than your typical bank products, right? Like, you know, uh, we talked about cost segregation. So tax liability there, you get the appreciation, you get the stability that you don't really have in the stock market. You know, so many more benefits, but the, the sad thing is, you know, people aren't educated on it because the, the banks have a best, vested interest not to tell you about it. You know, they, that's why they call it an intel- alternative investment. Uh, so, you know, with us, it's more just like spreading the word. And then like you see people's eyes open up uh, when it clicks in their head and then they get really excited. Yeah, no, that's very true. All right. Any closing words, Seth? Um that you want to let our audience know where we, where we can follow you um, and learn more about uh, you and your investment strategies and all that good stuff. For sure. Yeah. Uh, we publish a new uh, YouTube video every week. Uh, so you can go to youtube.com slash Seth Ferguson. And uh, if you are interested in getting started in multifamily investing, uh, we actually have a quick start guide. It's a free download. I uh, just go to multifamilyconference.ca slash quick hyphen start hyphen guide um i'm sure you can put the link down there too and it's a free download and it'll get you started on the right track all right well thank you so much jeff it's been a pleasure talking to a a real canadian that played hockey and also refereed professionally and now a real estate broker extraordinaire and multifamily conference promoter and event and you get kevin o'leary too that's a huge person to get so yeah 
Uh, that's awesome. I, I can't wait to, uh, if I don't, be, if I'm not able to attend, at least I can go online and see some of the pictures and see what, see all the fun that you guys are having. So thank you so much for joining us and please like and subscribe to this channel guys. So I can bring other guests from other countries all around the world to bring value to you, the listeners. All right. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next show.